Good day! I am student nurse Luis Ortiz from Lesson 1, Alarmo D. And today, I will be performing the assessing of the cardiovascular system. Prior to performing the procedure, review the client's medical record and check the doctor's order for the need of the performed to the assessment. And next, determine the scope of assessment needed and prepare the necessary equipment. So the equipment I'm going to use includes a rectangular part, a centimeter ruler, the stethoscope, and our pen light. And also perform hand hygiene and apply gloves as needed and observe other appropriate infection prevention procedures. Greet the client politely and the client's companion if around. Introduce self and verify the client's identity and has ask how the client would like to be called during the assessment and establish rapport with the client. Explain the procedure to the client and how he or she can participate during the assessment and provide the client the opportunity to clarify, ask, or raise any concern. And ensure client's comfort, privacy, and confidentiality. Address the client's body as needed throughout the assessment. Inquire if client has any existing in history of cardiovascular problem as well as lifestyle habits that are risk factors of cardiac problems. Good day ma'am, I am student nurse Louis Ortiz from Davao Doctors College. Your student nurse for today and may I see your wristband? Okay, please take your name and your date of birth. Okay, so today I'll be assessing for your uh, cardiovascular system which means I will check for your pulse on your neck, on your arms, and also for your legs, and listen for your uh, heart sounds, and will that be alright to you? Okay, so uh, before we start, do you have any questions? No. Okay, so uh, would you mind if I close your curtain and your door? Yes. Okay. Okay, so before we start, I have some few more uh few questions or a short interview for you so is that be okay with you yes. okay so do you have any specific uh complaints or pain that you are feeling in your chest right now no. and your upper extremities no. okay so uh, have you experienced shortness of breath or dizziness no. okay so is there any history of hypertension neocardial infarction uh, coronary disease in your family no. okay so do you smoke Okay, uh, what are your usual activities? My uh, usual activities are uh, school, uh, exercise, and Okay, uh, do, uh, do you exercise uh, uh, like uh, twice a week or twice a week or sometimes? Twice a week. Twice a week, okay. So uh, I'll repeat what you have said. So you don't have any specific complaints about your chest or your upper extremities. Uh, you don't have experience shortness of breath as well as dizziness or headache. And you don't have any history of hypertension, myocardial infarction in your family. And you, uh, you don't smoke and your usual activities is going to school and uh, watching TV and Exercise regularly, uh, like uh, twice a week. Is that alright? Yeah. Okay. Now we will start the assessment of jugular veins. Stood at the right side of the client and position the client supine with the head of bed elevated between 30 and 45 degrees, making sure that the head and torso are on the same plane. Instructed the client to turn the head slightly to the left and shown tangential light source onto the neck soprasternal notch and area around the clavicles to observe for pulsation and shadows. Fully distended jugular veins with the client's torso elevated more than 45 degrees indicate increased central nervous pressure that may uh, that may be the result of the right ventricular failure, pulmonary hypertension, and pulmonary emboli or cardiac tamponade. Okay. 
If jugular distension was noted, assess the jugular venous pressure by locating the highest visible point of distension of the internal jugular vein, emphasize the distension with tangential lighting. As deemed necessary, raise or lower the head of the bed 30, 45, 60, and 90 degrees until the highest visible point of distension of the internal jugular veins was observed. Measure the vertical distance in centimeters above the sternal angle by extending a long rectangular object or card horizontally from this point and centimeter ruler vertically from the sternal angle, making an exact right angle. Repeated the preceding steps on the other side. Distension, bulging, or prostrusion at 45, 60, or 90 degrees may indicate right-sided heart failure. Documents at which position, 45, 60, or 90 degrees, I observe distension. Any clients with obstructive pulmonary disease may have elevated venous pressure only during expiration. An inspiratory increase in venous pressure, called cosmal sign, may occur in clients with severe constrictive pericarditis. I have observed that the jugular vein should not be distended, bulging or protruding at 45 degrees or greater, with head of the bed still slightly elevated at 30 degrees. Position the client's head slightly towards the side, being examined, palpated the carotid artery cautiously, avoiding too much pressure or massaging the area. Repeated the preceding steps on the other side. Turn the client's head slightly away from the slide being examined. Place the bell of the stethoscope over the carotid artery and ask the client to hold his or her breath for a moment and auscultate the carotid artery, listening for bruit. If a bruit was heard, gently palpate the artery to determine the presence of a tree. Repeated the preceding step on the other side. A bruit or a blowing or swishing sound caused by turbulent blood flow through a narrowed vessel is indicative of occlusive arterial disease. However, if the artery is more than two-thirds included, a bruit may not be heard. Pulse and equality may indicate arterial constriction or occlusion in one carotid. Weak pulses may indicate hypovolemia shock or decreased cardiac output. A bounding fear pulse may indicate hypervolemia or increased cardiac output. Variations in strength from beat to beat or with respiration are abnormal and may indicate a variety of problems. A delayed upstroke may indicate aortic stenosis. I have observed that the clients is no blowing or swishing or other sounds are heard. Pulses are equally strong, A2 plus or normal with no variation in strength from beat to beat. Contour is normally smooth and rapid on the upstroke and slower and less abrupt on the downstroke. Arteries are elastic and no thrills are noted. And next began with general inspection of the chest wall. In women, kept the right chest draped, gently lifted the breast with the left hand or asked the woman to do this for assistance. 
stood at the right side of the clients with the head of the bed elevated at 30 degrees and looked for any abnormal pulsations. Shown a tendential light across the chest wall over the cardiac apex to make these movements more visible. Pulsation, which may be also called hips or lifts, other than the apical pulsation, are considered abnormal and should be elevated. A hip or lift may occur as the result of enlarged ventricle from an overload of work. The apical impulse may uh, the apical impulse is not observed to the client and may not be visible. If apparent, it would be in the mitral area. And also for the apical impulse is a result of the left ventricle moving outward during systole. Next, I simultaneously inspected the precordium for pulsation while palpating aortic area, pulmonic area, tricuspid area, and apical area. First, palpated for hips, leaves using the palm and pulled finger pads flat or obliquely against the chest. And for drills, press the ball of the hand firmly on the chest to, to check for a buzzing or vibratory sensation caused by underlying turbulent flow. Hips are felt with an enlarged right or left ventricular aneurysm. Trills indicate aortic, mitral, or pulmonic acetonis and regurgitation that may originate from rheumatic fever. Pulsation suggests an aortic or ventricular aneurysm, right ventricular enlargement, or mitral regurgitation. I have observed that the precordium is still not visible and without thrills. Hibs palpable pulsations noted exception may be the apex of the heart if close to the surface. Next, palpated impulse using finger pads flatly or obliquely on the body surface from the aortic area, pulmonic area, and tricuspid area. Palpated the apical impulse using the palmar surfaces of 2 to 3 middle fingers. Then, for finer assessment, palpated with one finger alone to confirm characteristics of the apical impulse, noting for location, diameter, and amplitude. If unable to palpate the apical impulse with the patient supine, reposition the patient to roll partly onto the left lateral side, Palpated again using the palmar surface of several fingers if still unable, unable to palpate as the patient to exhale fully and stop breathing for a few seconds and palpate again while patient maintains to be partly facing his left side. The apical impulse may be impossible to palpate in clients with pulmonary emphysema. If the apical impulse is larger than 1 to 2 cm, Display is more forceful or of longer duration, suspect cardiac enlargement, a thrill which similar to pouring cut or a pulsation is usually associated with a grade 4 or higher murmur.
the apical impulse is palpated in the mitral area and may be the size of nickel. 1 to 2 cm amplitude is usually small like a gentle tap. The duration is brief, lasting through the first two-thirds of systole and often less. In obese clients or clients with large breasts, the apical impulse may not be palpable. In order clients, the apical impulse may be difficult to palpate because of increased anterior-posterior chest diameter. Uh, low palpations or vibrations are palpated in the areas of the apex, left sternal border, or base. And next, inspected and palpated the epigastric area at the base of the sternum for abdominal aortic pulsations. Bounding abdominal pulsations, examples are aortic aneurysm, I have observed that the client has aortic pulsations. And next, assess for heart rate and rhythm by placing the diaphragm of the stethoscope at the apex and listening closely to the rate and rhythm of the apical impulse. Counted the heartbeat for a full minute. If an irregular rhythm was detected, assess for a pulse rate deficit. Using the diaphragm of the stethoscope, first, then the bell escultated the heart in all four anatomic uh, sites, which is the aortic, pulmonic, tricuspid, and apical area for heart sound, extra heart sounds, and murmurs. Ask the client to breathe regularly while auscultating. Repeated the proceeding steps while patient is in left lateral position. Then at sitting position, leaning forward and briefly stop breathing after exhalation. A, brad a bradycardia or less than 60 beats per minute or tachycardia more than 100 beats per minute may result in decreased cardiac output. Clients with irregular rhythms such as premature atrial contraction or premature ventricular contractions and irregular rhythms such as atrial valve fibrillations should be referred for further evaluation. These types of irregular patterns may predispose the clients to decrease cardiac output, heart failure, or emboli. A pulse deficit, which is difference between the apical and peripheral or radial pulses, may indicate atrial fibrillation, atrial flutter, premature ventricular contractions, and varying degrees of heart block. Ejection sounds or clicks such as mid-systolic click associated with mitral valve prolapse. A friction rub may also be heard during the systolic, post-pathologic, mid-systolic, pan-systolic, and diastolic murmurs. Kasih lihat tu kan? Kita sekarang mama menggembus ke mama, di kamar di kamar. I have 
observed that the client has normal rate and the client is 60 to 100 beats per minute with regular rhythm. A regular a uh, regularly regular rhythm such as sinus arrhythmia when the heart rate increases with inspiration and decreases with expiration may be normal in young adults. Normally, the pulse rate in females is 5 to 10 beats per minute faster than in males. The radial and apical pulse rates should be identical. Normally, no sounds are heard and normally no murmurs are heard. However, in the scent and Psychologic medsystolic murmurs may be present in a healthy heart. Next, examining upper extremities. Assess each arms for size, symmetry, skin color, and temperature from fingertips to shoulder. Noted for any presence of edema, lesions, changes in skin, texture, and hair distribution. Lymphedema results from black lymphatic circulation which may be caused by breast surgery. It usually affects one extremity causing induration and non-pitting edema. Prominent venous patterning with edema may indicate venous obstructions. Reynolds disease, a vascular disorder caused by vasoconstriction or vasospasm of the fingers or toes is characterized by rapid changes of color such as pallor or cyanosis and redness and also swelling, pain, numbness, tingling, burning, throbbing, and coldness and the disorder commonly occurs by laterally symptoms last minutes to hours. A cold extremity may be a sign of arterial insufficiency. Cold fingers and hands, for example, are common findings with Raynaud's disease. Ang mama, magpantrip ko mama. Um. I have observed that the arms are bilaterally symmetric with minimal variation in size and shape, no edema or prominent venous patterning, color varies depending on the client's skin tone, Although color should be the same bilaterally, skin is warm to, to touch bilaterally from fingertips to upper arms. And next, inspected the peripheral veins in the arms for the presence and or appearance of superficial veins when limbs are dependent and when limbs are elevated. Distended veins in the thigh and or lower leg or on posterior lateral part of calf from knee to ankle. Uh, I have observed that independent position, presence of distension, and nodular bulges at calves when limbs elevated. Veins collapse. Veins may appear tortuous or distended in older people. Next, what patent for radial pulse, ulnar, ul ulnar pulse, brachial pulse, individually and bilaterally. Increased radial pulse volume indicates a hyperkinetic state four or bounding pulse, diminish one or two or absent pulse as suggests partial or complete arterial occlusion, which is more common in the legs than the arms. The pulse could also be decreased from a burger's test, a burger's disease or scler scleroderma obliteration of the pulse may Result from compression by external source as in compartment syndrome. Lack of resilience or inelastasy of the arterial wall may indicate arterial sclerosis. Brachial pulses are increased, diminished, or absent. I have observed that the radial pulses are bilaterally strong, artery walls have a resilient quality, 
The ulnar pulses may not be detectable. Brachial pulses have equal strength bilaterally. Next, assess for capillary refill. Capillary refill time exceeding 2 seconds may indicate vasoconstriction, decreased cardiac output, shock arterial occlusion, or heart hypothermia. Capillary beds refill and therefore color returns in 2 seconds or less. And perform the Allen test and repeated the preceding step on the other arm. With arterial insufficiency or occlusion of the ulnar artery, color persists with arterial insufficiency or occlusion of the radial artery, color persists. Si ma'am, so ang limong kamot ma'am, so ang limong batang karon ma'am, kay mag, mag, ano ka, katulo ma'am, tapos, sa ikatulo kay hold ka then pagdungan ko brilis ma'am mo release ka okay okay so ikaw lang ma'am okay then release okay sa ba ma'am okay okay Okay, sa inyo lang yan pa ng button ma'am. Okay. One, two, three. Release. Okay, sa mga ma'am. One, two, three. I have observed that the client has pink coloration to return to the pulse within three to five seconds. If the Ulnar artery is patent. Pink coloration returns with 3, 5, 3 to 5 seconds if the radial artery is patent. Next, examining lower extremities. At supine position, assess each leg for size, symmetry, skin color, and temperature from grown to toes. Noted for any presence of lesions, changes in skin texture, and hair distribution. Pallor, especially when elevated and rubber when dependent, suggests arterial insufficiency. Cyanosis, when dependent, suggests venous insufficiency. A. Rusty or brownish pigmentation around the ankles indicates venous insufficiency. And also generalized coolness in one leg or change in temperature from warm to cool as you move down the leg suggests arterial insufficiency. Increased warmth in the leg may be caused by superficial throm thrombophil disc resulting from secondary inflammation in the tissue around the vein. Rough, flaky, dry skin is seen in hypothyroidism. And also loss of hair on the leg suggests arterial insufficiency. Often thin, shiny, and skin is noted as well. Okay, ma'am. So, karoon, ma'am, ah, magpalpit ko sa imuang legs pa doon lang sa imuang tiil, ma'am. So, okay, rabi na sa imuang. Okay. Okay. I have observed that the legs are symmetric and size, pink color for lighter skin, clients, and pink or red tones visible under dark pigmented skin. There should be a, the clients is no changes in pigmentation, toes, feet, and legs are equally warm bilaterally, legs are free of lesions, skin is smooth and also even, and hair covers the skin on the legs and appears on the dorsal surface of the toes. And hair loss on the lower extremities occurs with aging and therefore not an absolute sign of arterial insufficiency in the older client. And next, inspected the peripheral veins in the legs or the presence and or appearance of superficial veins when limbs are dependent and when limbs are elevated. Superficial vein thrombo by this is marked by redness, thickening, and tenderness along the vein. 
Karon ma'am kay bag inspect ko ko sa mga uh, legs nimo ma'am so para sa hair distribution okay na ma'am ma'am Veins are flat and bare uh, I have observed that the client's veins are flat and barely seen under the surface of the skin palpated for femoral pulses, papilial pulse, dorsal pedalis and posterior tibialis individually and bilaterally. So the weak or absent femoral pulses indicate partial or complete arterial occlusion. Normal papilial arteries may be non-palpable and absent pulse may also be the result of an occluded artery. A weak or absent pulse may indicate impaired arterial circulation. Further circulatory assessments, temperature and color are warranted to determine the significance of an absent pulse. A weak or absent pulse indicates partial or complete arterial occlusion. Okay hey, ma'am, so karon uh, ako ang iano ang mga, mga pools ni mo ma'am, so okay naman itong mga Okay, so naon lang ang dream ma'am ha Okay, ma'am naon Karon ma'am sa may femoral pulse ta nimo ma'am so okay naman si mga ma'am I have observed that the client's femoral pulses are strong and equal bilaterally. It is not usual for the papilial pulse to be difficult or impossible to detect and yet for circulation to be normal. Versalis pedis pulses are bilaterally strong and also this pulses is congenitally absent in 5% to 10% of the population. The posterior tibial pulses should be strong bilaterally. However, in about 15% of the clients, the posterior tibial pulses are absent. And next, assess the peripheral leg vein for signs of ulcerations, varicocities, and thrombophobitis. First, inspect the calls for ulceration, varicocities, redness, and swelling over vein sites. Varicose veins may appear as distended, nodular, bulging, and tortuous, depending on severity. Varicosities are common in the anterior lateral thigh and lower leg, the posterior lateral calf or anus, known as hemorrhoids, and varicose veins result from incompetent valves in the veins. Weak vein walls or an obstruction above the varicosity, Despite venous dilation, blood flow is decreased and venous pressure is increased. Superficial vein is, uh, thrombopolbitis is marked by redness, tightening, and tenderness. Along the vein, aching or cramping may occur with walking or dorsiflexion of the foot is positive of human signs. Swelling and inflammations are often noted. Ulcers with smooth, smooth, even margins that occur at pressure areas, 
such as the toes and lateral ankle, result from arterial insufficiency. Ulcers with irregular edges, bleeding, and possible bacterial infection that occur on the med medial ankle result from venous in insufficiency. Okay, ma'am, 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 inspect ko si mo ang mga calves ni mo, ma'am, for, uh, for days na to. So, okay lang ba'y si mo, ma'am? Okay. Dali lang, ma'am. Pwede lang kayo dito sa baba lang. I have observed that the veins are flat and barely seen under the surface of the skin. Varicosities are common in the older client and the client is free of lesions or ulcerations, redness, and swelling. And next, for the palpation of the calves for firmness or tension of the muscles, the presence of edema over the dorsum of the foot and areas of localized warmth push the calves from side to side to test for tenderness. Next, uh, this is because pitting edema is associated with sy systemic problems such as congestive heart failure or hepatic cirrhosis and local causes such as venous stasis due to insufficiency or obstruction or prolonged standing or sitting orthostatic edema. A plus 1 to 4 plus scale is used to grade the severity of pitting edema with 4 plus being most severe. Okay, so karoon ma'am, uh, magpalpate ko sa si mga calves ma'am for ibang check na ito ang mga mga uh, edema, kung nga ba yung mga edema, okay lang ba ma'am? Okay. I have observed that no edema is uh, pitting or non pitting present in the client's leg. And next, firmly dorsiflex the client's foot while supporting the inner leg in extension. A woman's test or had the client stand or walk is because calf pain and tenderness listed are positive of human sign. A positive sign may indicate deep vein thrombosis. Blood clot in deep vein or superficial thrombo pulled by this inflammation of a superficial vein. However, further diagnostic testing such as ultrasound of the legs and referral are indicated for a definitive diagnosis. Okay, so parang mama, ako ang i-dorsif legs at ako ang foot na to. So, okay lang mahi sa mga. Okay. Okay. I have observed that the client has no pain or tenderness elicited indicates a negative Homan signs. And next, assess for capillary refill for both legs and repeated the preceding steps with the other legs. So there is no or greater than 2 seconds capillary nail bed refill return of pink tone with respiratory or cardiovascular and for the uh, this is also a disease that cause hypoxia Okay ma'am, karo na mag capillary refill po dahil sa yung mga tail ma'am, okay naman eh Okay I have observed that the client has pink tone returns immediately to blanched nail beds when pressure is released. And next, inform the client of the assessment was done. If deemed necessary, assist the client to change clothes. Reposition the client comfortably sitting on a chair. Summarize the information obtained during the working phase and discuss findings to the client 
and discuss to the client possible plans to resolve health concern if present and assess for client's understanding of the plan and need for further teaching and provided the client the opportunity to clarify us or raise any concern and thank the client for his cooperation and ended the assessment politely and done after care and also perform hand hygiene and lastly documented the findings in the client record using printed or electronic forms or checklist supplemented by narrative notes when appropriate okay so now we are done with the assessment of your cardiovascular system and just to sum up everything that we've covered upon auscultation of your neck i've heard no uh swishing or blowing sounds pulses are equally strong rated 2 plus which means normal no thrills noted and your jugular venous pressure is at 6 centimeters of water with a pad elevated 30 degrees which is good or normal and upon assessment of your chest uh, note uh, of your uh, whole of your heart or pericardium Chest movement is symmetrical, no retractions, no hips or thrills pulsation, or vibrations are palpated in the areas of the apex. Left sternal border or base and the heart rate is 75 beats per minute with a regular rhythm and upon assessment of your upper and lower extremities, arms are bilaterally symmetric with minimal variation in size and shape and no edema. And also prominent uh, ve venous patterning, skin is warm, capillary refill is good, and also your radial ulnar and brachial folds are bilaterally strong and has a regular rhythm which is also good. And upon performing allen tests where you were opening and closing your hand, the result is also good and upon examining your legs, hair is evenly distributed, skin is warm, uh, no edema, no lesions, and no swelling atrophy, and your popliteal pulse, resalis pedis, femoral pulse, and posterior tibial pulses are normal. So overall, your cardiovascular system is doing very well. So I suggest that you keep on consuming healthy food and have a regular exercise, okay? So do you have any questions, ma'am? Okay, so uh, thank you so much for your cooperation today and have a great day and thank you so much again, okay?